They called it madness. A double-headed steam locomotive, boilers pointing in opposite directions, built for tracks barely two feet apart and curves sharper than a city street corner. In an age when ordinary trains struggled just to stay on the rails, this strange Siamese twin was mocked as a mechanical joke. Yet within months, it would outperform every rival and win orders from empires overseas. So why would anyone risk their reputation on something so outrageous? The answer begins with a railway cornered by geometry itself. This was a railway built for slate, not speed. Its two foot gauge tracks twisted through the Welsh mountains, narrow enough for a man to almost straddle both rails. Some curves were brutally tight, with a radius of just 116 feet, sharper than most road junctions, and utterly unthinkable for Victorian locomotives. Gradients climbed as steep as one in 50, forcing trains to climb and turn at the same time. For steam engines, these numbers weren't just inconvenient, they were fatal. Rigid framed locomotives hate tight curves. The longer the wheelbase, the harder the wheels fight to go straight, grinding against the rails and threatening to climb clean off them. To cope, Early engines were built tiny, with axles close together, but that meant low power, poor grip, and constant wheel slip on the hills. These were not tracks an ordinary locomotive could ever truly master. Before steam, the line relied on muscle and gravity. Horses hauled empty wagons slowly uphill, then trudged back down beside loaded slate wagons that ran under their own weight toward the coast. It was dangerous, slow, and exhausting. Brakesmen rode the wagons downhill, praying the curves wouldn't throw them into the ravine. Accidents were common. Delays were constant. By the early 1860s, the pressure was unbearable. The quarries demanded more slate moved faster and cheaper, but no conventional steam engine could survive the curves. Then came Robert Fairley. In 1864, he patented a locomotive that tore up every rule of steam design. Instead of one boiler, Fairley proposed two, mounted back to back on a single frame. At the centre sat one enormous firebox, feeding both boilers at once. Each boiler powered its own set of cylinders, mounted on swivelling bogies that could pivot freely beneath the engine. Every wheel was driven, every wheel could turn with the track. There was no true front or back. The engine could run equally well in either direction perfect for a railway with no space for turntables. Steam travelled through flexible copper pipes from the central firebox to the moving bogies, bending as the locomotive twisted through the curves. On paper, it was brilliant. In practice, it was a gamble. Crews quickly nicknamed the cab the skillet. The driver stood wedged between two boiling boilers, sweat pouring even in winter. The fireman had to shovel coal sideways into the central firebox as the engine lurched beneath him. Boots stuck to the floor, shirts were soaked through, and the flexible steam pipes, Fairley's greatest innovation, became the machine's weak point. With every curve, the copper flexed. Cracks formed, steam hissed and burst out without warning, sometimes scalding, sometimes blinding the crew in white fog. Fitters at Boston Lodge were forever patching leaks. Outside the railway, the ridicule was merciless. Newspapers called it a circus freak. Cartoonists drew it as a push-me-pull-you, with a doomed driver roasting in the middle. But Fairley knew only one thing mattered. What it could pull. Engineers, journalists and foreign commissioners gathered to see the verdict. First, a conventional locomotive tried its luck with a modest train. It slipped, groaned, and stalled on the incline. The limits were obvious. Then Fairley stepped forward. He ordered every available wagon coupled behind his engine, a train nearly 400 yards long, snaking around multiple curves at once. The crowd murmured. Many laughed. The fire was stoked. The twin whistles sounded, and the locomotive moved, slowly at first, then with confidence. All eight powered wheels gripped the rails. No slipping, no drama. It hauled the entire train smoothly through the tightest curves 
and up the gradient as if the mountain itself had finally surrendered. By the end of the day, the laughter was gone. Orders followed, from Russia, India and beyond. The design reached its ultimate proving ground in Mexico, where railways clawed their way from tropical lowlands to high mountain plateaus. Gradients steeper than one in 25, curves carved into cliffs and drops that punished even the smallest mistake. Here, fairly locomotives grew massive, nearly 100 tonnes, yet still bent obediently through the track. For decades, they hauled freight and passengers where no other engine could survive. Eventually, newer articulated designs like the Mallet arrived, simpler and cheaper to maintain. Across the world, Fairley's complex double-boiler engines faded away. But in Wales, they never truly died. Instead, they were rebuilt, improved, refined. New Fairleys were constructed using modern materials, stronger joints and better heat management. Machines that still run today on curves unchanged since the Victorian age. They remain the only locomotives capable of handling those brutal 116-foot bends with confidence. What began as a joke became a solution so perfect it refused to disappear. The Fairley locomotive proved something timeless, that sometimes the only way forward is to bend the rules completely. If you enjoyed this story of engineering madness turned triumph, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more incredible railway history. And let me know in the comments. Would you ride between two roaring boilers?